sanctuary tonight. Hallelujah. Bring our hearts and our minds into captivity tonight, Lord. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth tonight. We lift you up. We glorify your mighty name. You are mighty and great and greatly to be praised. You are the great I am. You are the wonderful, the counselor. You're the banner over me that is love. I praise you tonight. I praise you tonight, God. I exalt your holy name. Have your way in this service tonight. Amen, amen. Let's worship him in song tonight. Oh, how 
for our salvation we thank you for your banner over us we thank you for your love and your tender mercies we thank you for your grace tonight God hallelujah thank you for loving me hallelujah wooing us and drawing us nigh unto you praise your wonderful name amen give him a clap offering of praise hallelujah Amen. I wonder if you just find you a prayer partner. Let's pray one for another. And as we're praying, if there's anybody that you know of that needs prayer, let's pray for them as well. But let, the Bible says, pray ye one for another 
Amen. So let's pray for one another tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, hallelujah, you know every need that is represented in this house. Touch my brother and touch my sister tonight. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would encourage them. I pray that you would strengthen them and lift them up in the power of thy might. Let the hand of the Lord be upon them. Let your blessing be upon them. Open the doors you want open. Close the doors that you want closed. Manifest yourself in their lives and through them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, pour out a blessing, I pray. Pour out your blessing upon your children. In the name of Jesus, bind every principality and power of darkness that has come against them. Speak health into their bodies. Speak health, I pray, O oh God, into their bodies tonight. Lift them up in the name of Jesus. You said by your stripes we are already healed. We claim that power. We claim that virtue tonight. Hallelujah. Those that are depressed, we rebuke that depression in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. I shall exalt you. I shall praise you. I shall lift you up, almighty God, for you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name, Lord. Praise God. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise unto him. Hallelujah. He is worthy of our praise tonight. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and to fellowship. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. A special greeting as always to those watching online. We are so glad to have you with us in service. A couple of reminders for you. Easter outreach is happening every Saturday at 1 p.m. They meet here and they go out into the community to pass out cards. Please see Sister Vanessa for more information about that. The couples meeting is happening this Sunday at 6 p.m. It will take place at Brother and Sister Vogler's home, so you can see them about that. All couples are invited. We encourage you to come and attend this fellowship. A special reminder that PI, Purpose Institute, meets this weekend. Leadership class will be this Friday, so tomorrow. If you are a ministry head, please plan to attend. There will be an ushers and greeters meeting after service this Sunday. You can see Sister Vogler for more information about that. Refreshments will be served. And last but certainly not least, April 20th is the men's prayer breakfast happening at 9 a.m. Please come out and be part of that fellowship. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. A lot of great things going on. Amen. And don't forget to invite somebody to Easter Sunday service. Amen. Pick up some cards in the foyer, invite somebody, put a stamp on one, mail it to somebody. Amen. Looking forward to a great time in the Lord Easter Sunday. Amen. Would you stand with us one more time? We're going to pray over the offering. Then you can come and give to the Lord. Father, we're grateful for your blessings in our lives and all that you have done. I love you. I lift you up. I glorify your mighty name. Thank you for meeting every need. Thank you for opening every door. Thank you for your blessings upon each and every one of our lives. We just give you the praise tonight, God. We ask you to bless the gift and the giver as we give unto you, Lord. Let it be multiplied for your the kingdom, I pray. Not our will, but thine be done. And everybody say amen. Come and give as they sing another song. Amen.
give the Lord some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. that comes up in my soul that says hallelujah I'm grateful Lord I'm thankful God for all that you've done for me hallelujah let's lift our voices one more time giving praise thank you Lord for your grace thank you for your power thank you for saving us thank you for forgiving us of our sins blessed be your mighty name praise God praise God Amen. Praise God. Amen. Have your Bibles turn with us again to Psalms chapter 27. And I'm going to read verse 1 through 8 tonight. Amen. I am continuing what I started last Thursday about developing sensitivity to the Spirit of God. Amen. Developing sen sensitivity. Or we could just say being sensitive. Amen. Praise God. I want to be sensitive to God. How about you? The word says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Amen. We ought to memorize that. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after that. I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Amen. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I will sing, I will sing praises unto the Lord. 
Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Amen. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Amen. I think it would be good even if we would just get up every morning for the next 21 days and read that portion of scripture every morning. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Hallelujah. Why should I worry? Why should I fret? God before me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. Even when the enemy comes against me, hallelujah, Lord, they're going to stumble. Hallelujah. Because you're my protector. You're my way maker. Hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. Even if an army should come against me, my heart shall not fear. I ought to hear some amens. Fear be gone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We belong to the King. Amen. Hallelujah. And we desire to dwell in his temple and to behold his beauty. Let's pray one more time. Father, grateful and thankful for your word tonight. Truly, it is a light into my pathway. Hallelujah. You are my shield and my buckler. You are my victor tonight, God. Hallelujah. Let my heart and let our hearts be encouraged and strengthened and lifted up tonight because we know that thou art with us. Hallelujah. You said your rod and thy staff, they do comfort us. I pray tonight, let your blessing be upon the remaining time we have. Amen. Let your word find a lodging place in our hearts. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated tonight in Jesus' not in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I like what he said in verse 6. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Praise God. Amen. I'm not going to walk down with my head looking down at the ground, but my head is going to be lifted up. For the Lord is my help and my strength. The Lord is my salvation. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. My feet are on the rock, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the winds come. Let the storm rage. Let the armies come against me. He said, hallelujah, that we would stand the test. Praise God. For he is with us. Amen. We don't need to have worry and fear and doubt in our hearts tonight. But we need to be confident tonight that God is with us every single day. Amen. I said God is with us. God is with us today. Amen. It doesn't matter if you have the, the goosebumps running up and down your spine or your arm or whatever. Praise God. Nevertheless, God is with you. Amen. God said, I shall go with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Hallelujah. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. We need to be encouraged tonight that we are not just a bunch of nobodies on the face of this earth, but we belong to the King of Kings. And we belong to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He has redeemed us with his blood. Our names are written in that Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. And we are confident tonight. I said we are confident tonight that when that trumpet sounds, that those of us who know our God, who are full of the Holy Ghost, that we're going to ascend and we're going to go up to meet our Lord in the air. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. 
I'll just be honest with you. When you work all week and you're out in the world, I don't know about you, but it feels good to come to God's house. It feels good to feel the power and the presence of Almighty God. It feels good to shout hallelujah. It feels good to lift my hands unto my king. Hallelujah. And get some spiritual nourishment, if you will. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's good to have fellowship one with another. Amen. Why? Because we've been fellowshipping outside in the world all week long. But now we've come to God's house. And we're having fellowship with God. And we're having fellowship with one another. And he said where two or three of us are gathered in his name. That he's going to be in our midst. Praise God. God is with us. Amen. Whether we feel him or we don't feel him. He is never the less with us tonight he wants us to be encouraged he wants us to be strengthened he wants us to know that we are mighty walking warriors in the kingdom of God he said greater things than this shall ye do hallelujah we have the Holy Ghost tonight God has empowered us he said you receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you you are powerful tonight I said you are powerful tonight night hallelujah we are powerful in the mighty name of Jesus we should be encouraged for he said even if a host or an army shall come against me we don't need to worry about it for he is going to be there and he's going to rise up and he's going to be the conqueror and he's going to be the victor hallelujah he said that we should be confident that we should be confident that God is with us Praise God. Probably one of my favorite Bible verses is verse 4. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. To behold the beauty of the Lord. God is in the house tonight. Amen. I wonder if we can see him. Hallelujah. I wonder if we can feel him. I wonder if we can push past, amen, all the cares and the affairs of life and behold the beauty of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Remember I said last week, we've got to call those things that are not as though they are. When we come into the presence of God, we got to put the world on the outside. We've got to block out the world. And we've got to say, God, I've come to your house. I've come to worship you. I've come to praise you. I've come to lift up your name. I've come to say, hallelujah, it's good to be in your house, God. It's good to feel your presence, God. It's good to to see your beauty tonight God hallelujah amen take this whole world but give me Jesus there's a hunger in my heart there's a thirst in my soul tonight for more of Jesus and less of this world hallelujah amen goodbye world goodbye goodbye flesh goodbye I've got to walk closer to my God I got to seek his face I got to draw nigh unto him praise God Praise God. Clap your hands unto him. Praise God. Verse 7, he said, Hear, O Lord, when I cry. We all want our, our prayers to be answered, do we not? Amen. Hear, my, hear me, O Lord, when I cry. Have mercy also upon me. And we don't just want to pray empty prayers, but we want our prayers to be heard. Hello? I want my prayers to be heard. Amen. I don't want to just pray just to take up time. But I want my prayers to be effective. Praise God. He said, seek ye my face. Hallelujah. Seek ye my face. And David said, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hallelujah. If we don't seek him, we're not going to find him. Amen. Now, I know lots of people that they claim they know Jesus. But I wonder 
if they really seek his face. Amen. There's a lot of people that says, yay, I, I, I know the Lord. I love the Lord. I don't doubt they know him. I don't know, doubt that they love him. But I wonder if they seek his face. Matthew 6 and 33, he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Put God first in your life. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You want blessing, seek the kingdom. You want direction, seek the Lord. Hallelujah. You want power, seek Jesus. Hallelujah. You want anointing, seek Jesus. Hallelujah. You want peace, seek Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that we have need of, we need to learn to seek the face of the Lord for. Hallelujah. Amen. We go out and we try to take the bull by the horns and we try to work all the situations out in our own ability. We go and we ask 15 different people for their opinion and sometimes we try their opinions. Amen. But what we really need to do is bury our nose in the book. Bury our face in the floor. Amen. Bow our knees to our God and say, Lord, your face is what I'm going to seek. I'm going to seek you with all my heart. I'm going to seek you with all my mind. I'm going to seek you with all my soul because you're the one that has the answer. You said the steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. Order my steps aright, O oh God. You said cast down my vain imagination. Bring my every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. Help me to think right, God. Help me to hear right. Help me to go right. Help me to do right. Help me to represent you well, Father. Help me to draw closer to you. And the closer I get to him, the less of this world I want. Amen. He said, lay aside every weight and lay aside every sin that does so easily beset us. He said, hallelujah. Paul said hallelujah like running a race he said I press towards the mark for the prize in the high calling of Christ Jesus my Lord I've got to press I got to keep on running I got to put the naysayers away hallelujah I got to lay some things down I got to get closer to my God because I realize that without him I can do nothing hallelujah as John said I I must decrease that he might increase. I need more of you, God, more of your power, more of your anointing, more of your grace, more of your mercy, more of your joy tonight. I need more of you. Clap your hands to him. <laughs> Praise God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Draw close to him. He said draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. If we seek him, he said he would be found. Hallelujah. God's not hiding. I said, God's not hiding from us tonight. He wants to be found. Hallelujah. He wants to have a relationship with you and me. Amen. I said, he wants to have a relationship. We don't have much of a relationship if we never talk to one another. Hello. Praise God. Amen. When I watch young people date... Amen. They can't get enough of each other. Amen. In fact, some of them, they're so engulfed in what they're talking about, they don't even realize anybody else is around. Praise God. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we get that engulfed with God? Hallelujah. We just forget about everybody else that is around. 
We're not worried about what time it is. We're not worried about what we're going to do later on. We're not worried about our problems. It just feels good. He said, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. That we just get lost in the power and the presence of Almighty God. That's the kind of relationship Jesus is wanting the church to come to. Amen. We're saying we want revival. and We're saying we want to see things happen. We want to see people saved. We want to see people healed. Well, it will only happen as the church collectively draws nigh to God and as the church collectively, amen, seeks first the kingdom of God and as the church collectively gets a hunger and gets a thirst and a desire for the things of the God. Hallelujah. He said, he that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness shall be filled. Hallelujah. Amen. There's got to be a hunger in our hearts. There's got to be a desire in our spirit. Spirits, hallelujah, that I've had enough of the world. I want more of God. I want more. I want all that he's got for me. Hallelujah. And if I will draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to me. Hallelujah. And we'll develop a relationship with one another. Amen. I said we'll develop a relationship with one another that I won't have to wonder, God, where are you at? I won't have to feel like God is 15,000 miles away from me. But I know that he's a present help. I know he's right here beside me. Why? Because I talked to him this morning. Hallelujah. I talked to him tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I put some things aside. I made some time to have a little talk with Jesus. To tell him all about my problems. To tell him all about the desires of my heart. To have a relationship with my father. And as as I begin to talk to him. Amen. He reassured me everything's going to be all right. He reassured me that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus my Lord. Hallelujah. He reassured me though the devil and all of his angels would come against me. I am still the victor. I am still the victor. And you know what that does? As I talk to him and as I walk with him there's something that wells up on the inside of my soul and faith begins to rise I said faith begins to rise hallelujah and there's a well of living water that starts to bubble up on the inside of my soul and faith to rise and I pick up the shield of faith and I the Lord of the Spirit and he's a lie. He's a father of lies. And I say, get thee behind me in the name of Jesus, for it is written. Hallelujah. And because I've had a relationship, I've become a mighty walking warrior in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I know that he is with me. I know that when the devil comes in, that he will put his arms around me and he will protect me. And the battle, it will not be fought on because of me. Hallelujah. But he will fight my battle. I can sing the song. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory, victory shall be mine. Praise God. Hallelujah. When I walk into a hospital room and somebody needs prayer, I don't have to call the pastor. I've got the same power the pastor's got. Because I'm a believer. And he said, greater things than this shall ye do. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. They shall recover. I would to God that we'd get so bold in the Holy Ghost. 
hallelujah, that when we walked into the hospitals, amen, we wouldn't be just listening to all the negativism that the doctor spews out, but we say, hey, let me pray for my friend, silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give I thee, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed, in the name of Jesus, rise up, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and God begins to do some miracles, hallelujah, why? Because there's some believers that took him at his word, and there's some believers that stepped out in faith, and there's some believers that's had a little talk with Jesus, and they are full of faith, and they are full of power, and they begin to do, oh, hallelujah, they begin to do signs and wonders and exploits, hallelujah, why? Hallelujah, because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And our ministries begin to blossom. And our ministry begins to bloom. Why? Because God is being manifested in us. And God is being manifested through us. That's the will of God. That's the will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I just say it like this? I don't believe the devil really cares how many times you come to church. I don't think the devil really cares, amen, hallelujah, that you pay your tithes or, or you give in the offerings or you help some people out with clothing or feed some people with some food. But what the devil cannot stand is an apostolic full of the power and this whole oh, hallelujah and the spirit of almighty God, hallelujah, that says silver and gold, have I none but such as I have I'm going to give it to you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and when the church begins to do exploits hallelujah God is going to begin to do signs and wonders and miracles because a believer stepped out and a believer took God at his word and a believer said I'm going to do what the king told me to do Praise God. Hallelujah. But we'll never do exploits if we don't learn to be sensitive to the moving of the Spirit. If we don't learn to hear when the Master tells us to do something. I am convinced tonight that we can become so engulfed in living. Not that you're sinning, but in living. And I am convinced that if the devil can keep you so busy that you can't do anything for God, he's going to keep you busy. Amen. Because he doesn't want you to become sensitive or capable or stimulated by the Spirit. He doesn't want you to become excited about your God. Hello? I said the devil don't want you to become excited about God. The devil don't want you to get excited about living for God. The devil wants to keep you cooped up in a box. And he really doesn't care if you have church inside the four corners of the church. But when the church gets out of the church building and goes out into the highways and the byways and we begin to compel them to come in, we begin to be the witness that God called us to be. We begin to lay hands on people and pray for them. That's when the devil, hallelujah, doesn't like the apostolic church because he can't control the spirit of God. He can't stop the move of God. He can't stop the power of God. Hallelujah. As long as we 
we stay in our box, he's going to let us patty cake for Jesus till the rapture takes place. But when the church gets so excited, when the church gets so stimulated, when the church gets so full of the power of God that we say, I can't stay in the church any longer. I got to go do something. I got to teach a Bible study. I got to bring somebody to church. I need to lay hands on somebody. When the church begins to be apostolic, when the church begins to become apostolic, the revival is going to break forth. Signs and wonders are going to demonstrate. Hallelujah. God is ready. He's waiting on you and he's waiting on me. I said God is ready, but he's waiting on the church to get to a place and to get to a place of relationship where we become stimulated and we become excited about the working for the kingdom of God. Clap your hands. Sensitive. Excited over the power and the presence of God. I don't know about you, but when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, I got pretty excited. Hallelujah. I'm still excited tonight. Amen. I, I'm still excited about the power of God. I'm still excited about the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. There's nothing I like better than seeing a demonstration of the power of God. There's nothing I like better than God stimulating me. Hallelujah. Amen. And my hand goes up and my mouth begins to sing the songs of Zion. And I shout hallelujah. And somebody dances in the aisle. And somebody rolls on the floor. Why? Because I've been stimulated by the power of the Holy Ghost. I've been brushed with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Hallelujah. And it's in the middle of that stimulation. It's in the middle of that excitement that I respond to the moving of the Spirit. And I know that God is with me. And I'm encouraged. And I'm strengthened. I'm encouraged. And I'm strengthened. Because I know God is in me. And I know that God wants to do something through me. I'm trying to say when God stimulates you. When God excites you. There ought to be a response to the moving of the spirit. Because it's in the middle of your response to the moving of God's spirit. Hallelujah. That God shows up and God acts out. And God demonstrates himself. Amen. Hallelujah. But when I lose my ability to respond... When I lose my ability to respond to the Spirit, when I'm comfortable sitting in a church service and not responding, mm, I'm going to preach it now. Praise God. When I become comfortable with everybody else praising the Lord, when I become comfortable just sitting there and folding my hands and looking around and saying, what are they getting so excited about? Hello. When I lose the ability to be stimulated by the Spirit and have a spontaneous reaction of lifting my hand or shouting amen or shouting hallelujah, amen, there should be a red flag that goes off in my, my heart and my mind and my soul. There's something wrong with me. Hallelujah. Because you know what happens? Well, all of a sudden people that fail to respond to the moving of the Spirit of God. Amen. They begin to look around. And then they begin to examine themselves. And to compare themselves amongst themselves. And the Bible tells us they that compare themselves amongst themselves are not wise. Hallelujah. 
and we, we look around and, and we're wondering why am I not being stimulated anymore? Why am I not feeling the power like I did when I first was filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Well, I don't know why exactly other than the fact is that it's probably been a little while since you laid some things on the side. Hallelujah. And you bowed your knees in prayer and you sought God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul and with all your strength. Hallelujah. Because what happens is I stop praying one day and I'll stop praying another day and I'll stop praying another day. And it won't be long till I won't even pray for an entire week. And then a month will roll by. I really haven't prayed. I really haven't sought God. I really haven't got down to business with God. And all these things begin to come my way. And I begin to wonder, why is this happening? And why is that happening? It's happening because I have become engulfed with the world instead of becoming engulfed with the power and the presence of God. I no longer have a prayer life the way I used to pray I no longer seek him the way I used to seek him I no longer have a desire to get closer to him I become cold and I become callous in my walk with God and I begin to wonder what's wrong with this one and what's wrong with that one and we begin to pick each other apart in the family of God why? because our eyes aren't on God any longer but our eyes are on ourselves and God tells us not to compare ourselves. If you're going to compare anything, compare yourself to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm here to say tonight, it's time that we come back to the first love. It's time that we come back to the day God first filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As I said last week, it's time that we begin to be renewed in the Holy Ghost. Titus 3 and 5 tells us to be renewed. He said, not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost (laughs) we can't live without the Holy Ghost I said we can't live without the Holy Ghost I need the power of God. I need the anointing of God. I need the presence of God. I need to have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Because if I get to a place where I can't be stimulated any longer, and I get to a place where I can't get excited about God any longer, then the devil has already won the battle. Hallelujah. We lose our ability to respond. And we also lose our ability to stay saved. Mm. Hallelujah. I said, we lose our ability to stay saved. And if you don't know it, we don't believe once saved, always saved. You're only going to stay saved by drawing closer to him. You're only going to stay saved by walking with him. You're only going to stay saved by having a relationship with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we come to church. I don't feel like lifting up my hands, Pastor. I don't feel like clapping my hands, Pastor. I don't feel like singing those songs, Pastor. Amen. God forbid I get out in the aisle and dance. Hello. See, we blame the devil for everything, but the devil isn't responsible for everything. There's the devil, there's your flesh, and then there's God. 
The Bible already told us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the problem's not going to be with God. God said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever, and I change not. God's got just as much power. There's just as much Holy Ghost. There's just as much deliverance. There's just as much of everything in God today as there was in the Apostles' day. Amen. Amen. So the problem's not with God. So it's either our flesh or the devil. And we blame a lot of stuff on the devil he never did. I'll just be honest with you. This is how I believe. You can drive down the beltway and you can have your tire blow out. And somebody say, oh, the devil blew out my tire. But you've been running around on bald tires for three years. And you need a new set of tires. And it wasn't the devil. It was your ignorance. <laughs> there was a lady in my neighborhood that last little slow snow that we had. Hey, man. And there's a little bitty hill it's not much of a hill, but it's a little bit of a hill. And she had a van, and she just was spinning them tires, man. And I, and I was, you couldn't get two cars past her because there was a car parked on one side, and you had to wait till she got out of the way before I could kind of like Sinope Way down here. Amen. So I parked my car, and I walked down. And I said, would you like me to move your car for you? The other part is she didn't know how to drive in snow. Amen. But she had a bunch of bald tires on that car. Amen. And I had to back the thing all the way down the hill. And I had to get a running start to get it up that little bitty hill because of the bald tires on her car. I got out of the car. I said, I didn't say lady, but I said, ma'am, I said, you need a new set of tires on this vehicle. Amen. So don't blame the devil and don't blame somebody else for all the problems in your life. Some of them are just up to, mm, hallelujah. Some of it's because of your ignorance tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is never going to make you do anything that you don't want to do. I'll say that again. God will never make you do anything you wanna, don't want to do. He's not going to make you lift up a hand. He's not going to make you sing the songs of Zion. He's not going to make you get out in the aisle and dance. Amen. He's not even going to make you receive the Holy Ghost. I thought I'd pause on that a minute. Praise God. God will not even make you receive the Holy Ghost. It's a gift that is freely given to you of God. And when God gives you a gift, you must receive that gift. Amen. You must invite him into your house. Hallelujah. Praise God. In fact, you got to just, I don't, I've never seen anybody get the Holy Ghost that wasn't praising him. You just got to get lost in praise and you got to get lost in worship. Hallelujah. All right, it's Thursday night, so I'll do a little teaching tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know, we need some help on Sunday mornings in the altars. But I see a lot of people just come down here and stand. And people that need the Holy Ghost. So you that got the Holy Ghost, here's your assignment. When you see them just stand, you need to get in their face, turn around, look at them straight in the eye, and you need to say, lift your hands. Lifting your hands is a sign of surrender. Amen. I'm not saying... you. That's the only way to get it. But, you know, there's something about surrendering to the move of the Holy Ghost. And you need to say, and you need to forget about everybody else that's down here. And you need, I like to tell people, you need to just imagine you're talking to Jesus face to face. And I want you to start praising him. Start magnifying him. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. And, and just start praising the Lord. And sometimes if they don't know how, I'll start to praise them so that they'll start to praise him also. And when the two of us get finally just get 
not worried about what's going on around us and we start praising the Lord, all of a sudden sometimes they'll begin to get stammer and lift and I'll say, that's it, come on. Amen, come on, that's it, that's the Holy Ghost. Amen, let the Lord speak through you. Amen, let the tongues flow. Hallelujah. And, and if they just have stammering lips for a little while, I'll stop them and I'll say, now, look, receiving the Holy Ghost, it's a free gift given to you of God. Amen. But, you know, you're going to have to speak some words in faith. There's going to come some words to your mind that aren't going to make any sense whatsoever. Kind of like baby language. You know, when a baby first goo goo da da, I'm not saying that's what, I'm not telling them what, that's what to say. Please don't misunderstand. Praise God. But there's going to be some baby words that come that you don't really understand. They're not words of English, but they're words that make absolutely no sense to our common mind. But we're not serving God in our flesh. We're walking after the Spirit. And when I begin to speak in faith those words that God has brought from my heart to my mind, hallelujah, whether they make sense or not, and I begin to speak it in faith, then the Holy Ghost will begin to take over and the Holy Ghost will begin to roll out of that person and they'll receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But as long as you're trying to reason it out and logic it out and say this don't make sense to me, you're never going to get the Holy Ghost. And if they stand there like this, or like this, or like this, they're never going to get the Holy Ghost. They're going to have to worship God. They're going to have to speak some words. They're going to have to get emotional about God. That's good preaching, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. So we that have had the Holy Ghost and we that are strong in the Holy Ghost, we need to come down to the altar and help people that don't have the Holy Ghost to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 I'm giving you an assignment. You, all of you sitting around, you're praying, oh, God, use me. What can I do for the kingdom? You can come down to the altar, and you can pray somebody through to the Holy Ghost. That's what you can do for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Well, I thought I was going to sing, or I thought I was going to preach, or I thought I was going to teach Sunday school, or, yeah, well, maybe if you win a soul when you bring, pray somebody through, we'll let you. Oh, God, here I go. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. But I'll tell you, this old horse don't have what he used to have. And when I get done preaching, I'm, I'm just about to give out. Amen. And, and, you know, there was a day I did all the preaching. I did all the praying for the saints. I did, all, I did it all. I can't do it all no more. I need you. Amen. And you're wanting to be used of God, and you're praying God use you, and God's saying, okay, there's your sinner. Go down there and, and do something with them. Amen. And if they don't get the Holy Ghost, tell them, amen, stick with them. Teach them a Bible study. Amen. A lot of them need their eyes open to the word of God. Amen. We're telling them get the Holy Ghost and they don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. We use all this church language. Amen. When I was coming up in the church, amen, they'd say, hold on. Let go. Somebody be rubbing your back. Somebody be shaking you. It's amazing that anybody got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know what? God can give you the Holy Ghost despite all that foolishness. Praise God. Because he sees a heart that's hungry. And he sees a soul that's thirsty. And he said, he that hungereth and thirsteth after righteousness shall be filled. Hallelujah. Praise God. Clap your hands to him. Praise God. Last week I started on us having an ear to hear. In the book of Revelation, he said to the seven churches of Asia Minor, he said, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the church. Amen. 
Our world is full. Of, amen. We have become so de, de, uh, uh, sensitized. We've become so desensitized to sin that we accept things when we should not accept things. We accept abortion. We accept adultery. We accept fornication. We accept drunkenness. We accept violence. We accept drug addictions. Amen. And it's become so acceptable in our behavior and in our society that we don't even speak out against it anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, well, I, I don't agree with any of those things, but you know what we do do? Amen. God forbid, but we, we let our children watch television programs that are full of homosexuality. Amen. They're full of drugs and alcohol and, and immorality. And we'll sit down and we'll pipe all that stuff into us. Amen. And then we'll come to church and we'll wonder, why can't I lift up a hand? Amen. Why can't I sing the praises of God? Why? Because I've been filling my mind with all this immorality in the world. And I've been become so hallelujah I become so desensitized to it that I have learned to accept it amen and almost to the point that we tolerate it as normal behavior but we are the church of the living God and God said it is sin Amen. And we need to start calling sin what it is. It is sin. And God is not happy with adultery. God is not happy with homosexuality. God is not happy with fornication. God is not happy with liars and cheaters and stealers. Hallelujah. He said, come out from among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Amen. We cannot accept the world's morality but we must stand for truth and we must stand for righteousness. Praise God. The reason we can't hear the voice of God is because our minds are so cluttered with this descent. Oh, halabahatai. We are so consumed with all this junk in our world that we have not developed an ear that can hear the voice of God. Praise God. Mark 4 and 9. He said, and he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. Let him hear. I want to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Lord is speaking. But many of us cannot hear the voice of God because our minds are cluttered with the filth of this world. Mark 4, 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that, hath, that hear shall more be given. It shall be measured to you, unto you that hear. There's a blessing in hearing the voice of God. There's a blessing in hearing the voice of God. Have we become so desensitized and so encumbered with the things of this world that we cannot hear the voice of God? If that is the case, then you and I need to lay aside some things in our life and draw nigh to God and seek first the kingdom of God and seek the face of God because it's only then when I seek the face of God and I draw nigh to God will I be able to hear the voice of God. God is speaking, but we're not listening. Hallelujah. I must hear the voice of God. I can't live without hearing the voice of God. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. I must hear the voice of God. 
I can't go through life without hearing God. Because if I don't hear him, I won't know what to do. I won't know how to respond. I won't know where to go. I won't know that he is with me. All seven churches in Asia were apostolic churches. But the Lord said he had somewhat against them. And he told them to repent. Hallelujah. Not fear. In this age in which we're living, we have become too much like the world and not enough like him. Amen. Have an ear to hear. You know, the whole armor of God. We talk, the, the Bible says, put on the helmet of salvation. We don't think too much about that because we never grew up in Roman times. Amen. But you know what? When you put on the helmet of salvation, it guards your ears and it guards your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. It guards what you think and it guards what you hear. If I fill my mind... With everything that's in this world, I'll not believe that God can do anything. But if I will get my nose in the book and I'll fill my mind with the word of God, hallelujah. And if I'll tune my ear to heaven, hallelujah. And I hear the voice of God, I'll get up from my prayer. I'll get up strong in my walk with God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, when I've spent some time with the Lord and I've gotten up from having a talk with my God, I didn't have to wonder if he was with me. I didn't have to wonder where he was at. I didn't have to wonder what he wanted to be, me to do. I didn't have to wonder where he wanted me to go. There was a witness in my spirit. There was a boldness in my spirit. There was a direction in my step. Hallelujah. My eyes were on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because if you'll spend time with him, if you'll seek him, if you'll draw nigh to him, he's going to show up. I said he's going to show up. Hallelujah. You can't help but have him show up if you'll spend time with him. Amen. What God is wanting in 2019 is for his people to draw closer to him. For his people to seek his face. For his people to be strong in the power of his might not our might hallelujah hallelujah he said he's coming after a church that's made herself ready a church without spot a church without wrinkle a church without blemish hallelujah a church that knows their God a church that knows their God a church that knows their God a church hallelujah that's on fire a church that knows how to praise him a church that knows how to worship him, a church that knows how to do exploits for the kingdom of God hallelujah he's coming after a people that's got their mind made up he's coming after a people that's got their feet on the rock he's coming after a people that's on fire for the kingdom of God clap your hands to him Hallelujah. Luke 8 and 18, he said, Take heed therefore how you hear. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. Amen. Take heed how you hear. Take heed what you see. Matthew 13, 13, he said, Therefore speak I unto you to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and they hearing, hear not, neither do they understand. Hallelujah. Why? Because they're carnal. 
Hallelujah. They have eyes to see, but they don't see. They have ears to hear, but they don't hear. And what they do here, they don't understand. He says, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and by seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. He said, for this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are full, or dull rather. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Amen. Their heart has wax gross or cold. Their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes are closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. I shall heal them. Hallelujah. The trouble with us in 2019 is not that we don't have eyes or ears, but it's that we don't have eyes to see. Amen. We've got eyes, but we don't see what God wants us to see. And we've got ears to hear, but we don't hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. Why? Because our walk with God has grown cold. And he said he would that we would be either hot or cold. Because if we're lukewarm, he said he's going to spew us out of his mouth. He's not coming for a cold church. He's not coming for a lukewarm church. But he's coming after a people that's strong in the power of his might and got eyes to see and ears to hear and are walking with their God and are being led by the Spirit. Clap your hands to him. Make a joyful noise unto him. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. I'm going to do the same thing I did last week. The Lord just kind of moved and I moved with him. So, hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read two scriptures to you, and then I'm going to quit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. He said, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Simply put... We have got to learn to bring the flesh into subjection to the spirit. If you always do what your flesh wants you to do, you will never be a spiritual person. That's right. You can take that to the bank. If you always do what your flesh wants to do, hallelujah, you will not be a spiritual person. You, will, you need to bring your flesh into subjection. Amen. I'm preaching to the choir tonight, but a lot of people are staying home tonight because of their flesh. I'm tired. He didn't say stay home if you're tired. He said, don't neglect the assembling of yourselves together. But he said, so much more as you see the day approaching. We need to come to church more than we ever have come to church before. Amen. Praise God. The flesh doesn't want to come to church. The flesh doesn't want to lift its hands. The flesh doesn't want to sing. The flesh doesn't want to pray. But you've got to bring your flesh into subjection to the spirit. He tells us these are contrary, the one to the others, that you cannot do the things that you would. We want to do spiritual things, but we're walking in the flesh. Woo, hallelujah. Now, God honors faith, and, and I don't know why he honors some people's faith and not other people's faith, but he's God. He can do what he wants. Amen. For an example, you know, I, 
I remember when I was in Bible school and we were talking about signs and wonders and miracles and uh, Dr. Seagraves was our instructor and, and the topic came up, why then can these TV evangelists do things and see miracles wrought and they don't even preach the truth? Amen. The answer to that, according to him, and I believe it, amen, is that God honors faith. And if you step out in the realm of faith, God is obligated by his word to, to honor faith. Amen. His using a person, this is what we don't understand. We think because God uses somebody to lay hands on somebody and they get healed, that they're so spiritual. It is not a testimony of a person's spirituality. It's a testimony of the power of God. Because that person didn't do the healing. God did the healing. Amen. Another example of that is when, when uh, Balaam's donkey, amen, they beat the donkey and they beat the donkey and the donkey started talking. He didn't talk by his own ability, but God supernaturally allowed the donkey to speak. So the answer to the question is, if God can use a donkey, he can use any of us. And just because he uses you is not his approval upon you. Because he's going to honor faith. Doesn't mean, you know, there's a lot of people that haven't been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with Holy Ghost, but they have prayed for people and, and miracles have happened. And the reason they happen is because of their faith or the faith of the one being prayed for. Now, you don't have to agree with me, but I challenge you to prove me wrong. Amen. You have the right to be wrong. Praise God. <laughs> I just thought I'm trying to be funny. I'm sorry. Amen. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm trying to be funny. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, envies, murders, Drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you do any of those things, he's already said, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and temperance against such there is no law and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust Amen. verse number 24 Amen. praise God put that up there for me Amen. Galatians 5 24 there you go and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust Amen. We must learn to crucify the flesh. Amen. I say it again. We must learn to crucify the flesh. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm going to wait for you to put it on the screen because I don't have it marked in my Bible. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse number 19. Amen. Praise God. She'll get it there in a minute. There you go. He said, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Amen. Can I tell you that we can become professionals at saying not now, God, but later. I don't feel like raising my hand. I don't feel like dancing in the aisle. I don't feel like speaking in tongues right now. I'll do it later, God. And God will prod you. And God, God will never make you do anything against your will. You must submit yourself to him. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And we sometimes, amen, when we push off the nudging of the Lord, and I push it off, and I push it off, and I push it off, and I push it off. Hallelujah. What I am literally doing is I am extinguishing the move of God in my life. Amen. He said, quench not the spirit. In the Greek, it literally means to extinguish. In other words, put the spirit out. Amen. And as often as I push him off and I tell him later and not right now and I don't submit myself to the moving of the spirit, amen, I literally begin to quench the spirit of God or I extinguish the spirit of God. And if I begin to extinguish it for too long, I can't live any longer and I become lifeless in the spirit realm. Because I've become a professional at telling God, not now, but later. <laughs> Quench not the Spirit of God. Learn to flow with the Spirit of God. Learn to be sensitive to the voice of God. Learn when God begins to move that, yea, Lord, here am I. I want to be used of you. I want to be a temple of righteousness. I want to walk in the power of thy might. I want to do exploits, God. Not my will. We've all said it. Not my will, but thine be done, God. Use me for your glory. We've said, here am I. Use me, God. And God says, I want to use you. Just stop quenching my spirit. Learn to walk with me. Learn to talk with me. Learn to hear my voice when I speak. Hallelujah. And if you will draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh to you. If you will seek my face and you will turn from your wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal your land. Hallelujah. God is ready. God is ready. God is ready. Hallelujah. Help me, O oh Lord, to submit myself to you. Help me to draw nigh to you. Help me to do your work. Help me to walk in the power of your might. Help me to be more like you. Stand, lift your hands, lift your voices. Let's give God some praise before we go home tonight. Come on, lift your voice to him. Hallelujah. I don't want to quench your spirit. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to go where you want me to go. Use me for your kingdom. Hallelujah. Help me to be more like you, Father. Help me to lay aside every weight. and Help me to lay aside every sin that does so easily beset me. Help me to draw nigh. Help me to draw nigh, God. I want more of your power. I want more of your anointing. I want more of your spirit. I want to walk with you on a daily basis. I want to be strong in the power of thy might. I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to direct me, God. Help me to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset me. Lord, I present my body a living sacrifice. I pray holy and acceptable unto you. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Use me for your kingdom and use me for your glory. I love you tonight, God. Without you, I can do nothing. Hallelujah. Pray for somebody right now. Lay hands and pray one for another right now. Pray the blessing of the Lord upon them. Hallelujah. Lord, use my brother. Use my sister tonight. Let the glory of the Lord be upon them. Help them to hear your voice. Help them to see with your eyes. Help them to be led of your spirit. Help them to go where you want them to go. Help them to do what you want them to do. In the name of Jesus, let there be a special anointing upon them. In the name of Jesus, let every chain be broken. In the name of Jesus, let every captive be set free. I bind every principality. I bind every power of darkness. I bind the rulers of wickedness in the name of Jesus. I take power. I take dominion. I take a 
authority in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over the church tonight. I claim the healing power. I claim the victory tonight. Hallelujah. Now lift your voices and give him some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Find somebody else. Pray for somebody else. Hallelujah. Come on. We need to pray one for another tonight. We need to pray that they be encouraged, that they be strengthened, that they be uplifted. In the name of Jesus, bless them tonight. Strengthen them tonight. Use them for your glory, God. Use them for your glory tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Not by my might, not by my power. By your spirit, God. In the name of Jesus. Meet the need. Meet the need. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen, amen. You can be dismissed in Jesus' name.